Welcome back to Maple Syrup Tech. I'm Rick, and today we're going to be reviewing from Deep Cool their three RGB fan package called the RF120. Uh, basically, from uh, Deep Cool, the reason we're going to review this package more specifically is because, contrary to most companies which are making their RGB fans more and more expensive, uh, Deep Cool has taken a different approach and made theirs actually quite affordable. And I was wondering, you know, I wanted to test this package to see if you were getting really quality fans out of it or if we were going to get low quality, you know, a low quality product explaining the price. So let's take a quick look to see what they're offering. So in this package, Deep Cool is offering a six, a six piece high brightness RGB LED lights to show a, a magic, what they call a magic lighting effect. It's, they're all three fans are PM, uh, PWM function, functional and they are controllable either by the motherboard or through a uh, basically fan controller included in the package. Uh, they say that their fans are uh, de-vibration rubber which uh, lowers the noise and vibration in the case. You have uh, a different, you have the choice between either breeding or a static uh, mode basically with the included fan controller uh, you'll be able to use them in their what they say with or without a liquid cooler so I tried it as what they're trying to say is that you can actually uh, pair them basically with an all-in-one and uh, basically out of the package they say that it's compatible with Asus Aura Sync so that's the overview of uh, what Deepcool is offering and as you see I've installed them in a build so that we can get a real good look at how they work. And this is actually a non-RGB motherboard that I used. So we're using the uh, standard fan controller that comes with the RF120. Uh, just to let you guys know, I did test it with both Asus Aura Sync, which they say is compatible, and that was really, you know, no problem at all. But the really good news on top of it is that I tested it with my ASRock motherboard, and with the ASRock software, everything worked perfectly as well. So you got all the options that the ASRock software was offering, whether it be bre uh, breeding, a strobe effect, a rainbow effect, everything was functioning with the ASRock board as well as the Asus one. Uh, if any one of you, uh, by the way, have this package and have either a Gigabyte or an MSI board and you know if it's compatible or not, please leave it in the comments down below because unfortunately, uh, all the Gigabyte and MSI boards I have do not include RGB headers, so I was not able to test them with any of my boards, but it is something that if you community can help us out and leave it in the comments uh, down below, you know, it would really, I think, help everyone out. But already the fact that it's compatible with ASRock and not only the Aura Sync that they announced on the box is already a good sign because I was able to control them through the regular uh, like the regular control options for an RGB strip, meaning that in my opinion, they'll probably be pretty compatible with pretty much any software out there for controlling RGB. Now, uh, if you're including it in a build though, because I think this package, what's really makes it interesting is what's included in it. So let's go over that really quick and I'll put a close up on screen. So you've got the three fans, obviously. At the top there, you'll see you have the controller, which is basically very simple. It's a uh, three, you know, you have a three fan splitter and you have a three switch controller. We'll go over what the switches do in a couple of seconds. After that, you've got basically a hub for that can accommodate up to four fans. You have extensions for the RGB headers as well. So in case you're having difficulty, uh, you know, connecting the RGBs because you don't have enough uh, length, you have extensions for those. And finally, well, you have the included screws and uh, basically, you know, everything you need to fix them to your case. So that goes over pretty much what's included. By the way, this build is something I'm going to present to you guys in a couple of days. Uh, but it uh, served today specifically for the tests of the RF120s. And what I really find interesting about this is although it only costs 50 bucks here in Canada, and in the US I saw them as low as $40, while competing brands like Corsair or, um, oh my God, uh, like NZXT, their fans are easily above a hundred bucks. Like their kits with their controllers are above a hundred bucks. And even in the case of like, 
NZXT, what I don't like is that they force you through software control, meaning that even if you have a motherboard that's not RGB compatible, you have to use a USB 2 header and you have to control it through the software. It gives you more options, but at the same time, not everyone wants extra bloatware because you have to install the CAM software and stuff like this. With Deepcool, you have a control directly through uh, basically, you know, a physical control. The only downside, obviously, is if you have a, a case like this with a panel, you have to take the, pa you know, you have to take the panel off to switch it. But I fixed the controller up here at the top, and it's actually pretty simple. The way it works is you have one button that alternates the colors, and basically, if you press one, it goes on the same color to breeding. Press a second time, it changes color. Press again, it'll be that color breathing. Press again, changes color, and so forth. You've got about a dozen different color options going from red to basically yellow. Hold on, give me a second, because if you press too quick, it just alternates between uh, breeding and basically static. There you go, you gotta wait a couple of seconds. You switch this color, and basically, what the second button does is when you're on the breeding option, it actually fluctuates the speed at, of the breeding. So basically, the second button that you have down below, as you can see here in a couple of seconds, the breeding is going to get slower. So you can control the speed as well. So it's going to get even slower now, all the way to full speed. So basically, it's actually a pretty simple system. And if ever you're in a room and your computer runs at night and you don't want the extra lighting, there's even an off switch. So you hold the middle button down three seconds and you can turn the RGB fans off, which are actually some things that a lot of kits don't offer you. And I found was a really interesting inclusion with this one. And you know, just back and forth, you hold it another three seconds and poof, they go back onto your last set option. So overall, uh, I think Deepcool has delivered a really solid product here and for the price it's really offering everything you need or sync ASRock compatible uh, and like I said if you guys can help me out with MSI and Gigabyte I would really appreciate that as well um, I think Deepcool is really one of the top companies this year that is impressing me for offering quality to price products now the only thing I would have to maybe say is that the fans Although they're PWM compatible and they seem to be doing decent airflow, they seem to be more on the airflow side than uh, static pressure. Meaning that if you are trying to put them on like an all-in-one cooler or a radiator, I'm not sure how efficient they're actually gonna be at compared to like, let's say some high-end Corsair fans or high-end NZXT, you know, real pressure fans. Because they really, to be, they really seem to be more like case uh, airflow fans. So that would be the only thing I would tell you that if you're including them, uh, if your system is really a system that needs high performance cooling, I would maybe keep them for the case fans and try to include something different on the all-in-one cooler. But I actually haven't tested them compared to the Corsair fans, but that is once again something that I was going to look at in the future. We're going to do a specific video where we're going to compare at least four or five different bat brands of fan all using the same all-in-one cooler to see if there really is much of a difference but at the same time just to let you guys in on a little secret with um, radiators airflow is actually a lot less important than the size and diameter of the radiator so at the same time i'm not expect expecting like huge difference in results but anyway that's a separate video and we'll discuss it at that time Today, we really wanted to talk about the Deepcool RF120s. So for any of you looking out there and thinking that this is a cheap product, I'm gonna let you guys know that it is not. It's actually really easy to install. It was actually way easier to install than my NZXT um, RGB fans. So honestly, for all my future builds, I don't see any reason to go, uh, to, go to any other solution than these for my RGB pro uh, projects. Uh, the only reason I would say that you need to go for anything more expensive than this is if you're looking for a really specific effect uh, that only like NZXT can offer you because they have certain like, you know, rainbow effects or, or delayed effects that are really unique to their, uh, to their fan system. 
But other than that, if you're just looking for some nice lighting and you can deal with, uh, you know, either, you know, basic motherboard control or uh, with the actual physical uh, fan RGB controller, I mean, this package is for you. And for 50 bucks, you're getting a really solid product that delivers on its promise. So I hope you guys liked this video. As usual, likes and subscribes are always appreciated and help the channel out a lot so that I can push out more content for you guys. And if you guys have any questions that I haven't answered in this video that you would like to know about, just leave them in the comments down below. I try to answer everyone as much as possible. And, you know, as usual, I hope I'll see you guys in my next video.